Okay, so it seems like Grand Cross for the global side on Facebook themselves have finally shown the full trailer. I guess that's what this is going to be for the final boss for Merlin. So essentially, if we watch this right here, I'm going to turn the music down because I don't want to have any like copyright issues or anything like that. But you can literally see that they're bringing out Merlin. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I think this is way too early. I think this is just way too early because you have to realize uh, that we just had Gother. Let me move this a little bit to the side so you guys can see everything because I think uh, it fits all of it. Okay, yeah, it does there. Okay, perfect. So you're going to see, like, it's literally Facebook on here. They are confirming this, that Merlin is coming out. Now, I think this is way too early, especially because we just had Gothers that literally left, like, a couple days ago, and we're getting Merlins already. Now, this is, in my opinion, kind of good and bad at the same time because they're rushing all of the content to get to, um, you know, the actual uh, JP side. Now, as you can see, they have a new Escanor. As you know, if, if you guys have been playing the JP version, Red Escanor is finally coming to global, meaning you will be seeing some crazy things happen in PvP as well. So, uh, I don't know I don't know what they're doing with this, but honestly, this is kind of crazy. Uh, so, Red Escanor is coming out. We're going to be talking about all the units as well for what is best to run against Merlin. Team guides will be made a little bit later on uh, the week, talking, talking about like what uh, new units will be coming out. So, we'll definitely be doing all of that whenever that happens. What you see right here, that you're going to see like Merlin is obviously next to uh, Escanor, but right there. Meet them all on the 7-7 update. So, they are coming out for the game for global side which is insane so let me go back into the teams and stuff like that i think everyone's going pretty crazy with it yeah okay so valenti gone that's the thing red escanor is crazy with this that's why it's insane so to talk about him real quick uh basically his first card is his strongest card he does insane damage because of his amplify it's the same exact way that uh you know the Galland is where he has Amplify built into one of his attacks. I believe it's one of his attacks, or yeah, it should be his attack. Uh, it's basically the same way here. So Amplify is going to give a damage dealt plus 30% per active buff on self. So one thing to notice is that his passive is actually already a buff to him. So he increases the HP related stats of the hero by 50% for three turns at the start of the battle. So already he's ha he has that boost. Plus his Amplify, which is going to be doing over 270% or 450% on a silver or gold card, which is ranked 2 and 3. So you're going to see a lot of good damage from him. So that's why he's going to be super good to run against Valenti for sure. Um, now, his second skill. This is actually the thing I like about his second skill and why I like this one more than the green version of him. So his second skill actually takes away Ultimate Gauge Orbs. Now, it's only on rank 2 and 3. Or silver and gold cards which i i don't mind that it makes sense because of one star that'd be that'd be too op but it takes away one or three ultimate gauge orbs depending on the the version you're doing so two star and three star once uh one it does it for two star three uh three does for three star which is kind of crazy but honestly it's it's not really like in my opinion it's not really that big of a deal that he's coming out because you can still win against him if you run the right proper teams. But it's just crazy that the meta, it just keeps on changing on, on global. It just keeps on changing super, super fast. So him coming out right now is, is in my opinion, going to be really fun to try out. Uh, because he's just really, really good. And especially for the Merlin raid, or not raid, final boss, is going to be super fun and simple with him. So we'll see what happens with him. But basically, uh, you have to kill her minions, I believe. Then it's a GG for that. And then after that, it's literally just finishing Merlin herself. So she's a green type. So having red Escanor or a full red team is going to work perfectly for you. And then obviously his ultimate is the same as the green one. Just does insane damage uh, for that. So to talk about some units on the actual uh, boss battle itself or like what you can run is if essentially if you go to full strength units, all SSRs or SSRs, whatever you feel like, Basically, talking about Arthur would be one of them because the reason why Arthur is good is because, one, he can disable recovery skills if you want to do that. Two, he has the basic uh, stats buff, which is really good, and then also removing debuffs from all allies and all that stuff is really, really good. And then his ultimate can do some pretty good damage from there. Um, then his passive increases human allies HP-related stats by 15%, which giving um, you know Escanor that buff is going to be really, really good, especially against, um, one, PvP, and then two, if you're going to be going against the Merlin boss battle uh then having the second unit now this is a personal best opinion in my in my opinion like best best unit for this is gother because gother can actually rank up so if you can rank up all your cards and especially ranking up escanor on his first skill attack right here it's 
GG. Completely GG. You're doing insane damage. It's just super fun with Gother for sure. His ultimate obviously takes away ultimate gauge orb, so that's really good, especially against Merlin, just in case, because she can do a lot of good damage. Uh, then passive, all of you guys know how it works, increasing allies' attacks. Uh, other units that you can try running, because this is actually really good and could possibly be done even as a free-to-play unit. Um, if you do a SR team base, you can run Bond. Right, you can have Bond in your team because he can take away ultimate gauge orbs, which is really good. Also increases life steal by 30% when using a skill when the hero's HP is below 50%. So he he's basically self-sufficient when it comes to his health, right? His uh, his second uh card right here is actually a stance and he grants debuff immunity for a second a second and third uh three rank card. So he's good because he's basically self-sufficient. And he's a red type, so he has advantage over Merlin. Uh, then you have ult right here. You can do the ult with uh, his ult, which is actually really decent for damage-wise. So self-sufficient, he can be really, really helpful against um, the Merlin raid so or boss battle. So look forward to him as well. Another unit you can actually try. Well, fourth slot units, if you want to keep it that way, run Elizabeth in the back, in the fourth slot. The reason why is because she has that passive. She's mainly there for that passive. She gives allies all 10% HP, uh, max HP at the start of the next turn when taking damage, which you will be taking damage. So that's really good. She will be doing that. So fourth slot units, she's probably one of the best units for the Merlin raid, just in case, because it's a red type unit. So do that for sure. Now, an another unit you can try running as an SR unit will be Jericho. Jericho is good because one, she has a type advantage, and two, because of her passive. Her passive increases uh, attributes for strength units for uh, attack related stats by 10%. So she's going to be giving boost for, you know, Escanor. You can give a boost for, uh, you know, Arthur and so on and so on. She has a bleed, which is good because it's a debuff and then she can do additional damage every other turn or every turn, I guess, whenever it does at the end of turn. Her second skill is a rupture. So basically, if there's buffs on Merlin, you would be doing more damage with the second skill attack. And then her ultimate is a, um, I think it's, I thought this was a sever. I think that's different. I think that's just, um, Maybe that is different. Okay, anyways, makes target bleed for two turns, so that's additional damage. Is that the difference from... I think that's different from the Jericho, from her her ultimate. I could be wrong, though. Maybe I read it wrong, because I think hers is spike damage, is it not? Yeah, it has spike damage. Okay, so that's different. That's different. Okay. Anyways, um, bleeding, which is good, because you can do more damage every other turn, which is super, super helpful against Merlin, because you want to basically chip damage. But uh, Merlin's is probably one of the easiest boss battles, because all you have to do is take out her minions, which are really fast, because if you have units that are strong, then you can just take take them out and then go against um, you know, Merlin herself. But to talk about other units, I mean, as red-type units realistically it can you can even try any other team uh, the thing is with global since they have that point system teams will be different i i don't know exactly what teams you could run but these are certain units you can try to beat the the bottle uh, boss battle with which you should be able to but i can't really say for sure like what units you can actually use just because uh, because it's point system based so any any unit at this point can matter that will work great so uh, another you can unit you can try it would be bond just because Bon uh, himself has a weak point, so in case if you are debuffing for one turn or something like, I don't remember exactly if you can debuff Merlin, but if you could, for example, weak point could be very, very crucial if you are able to. So I'm not sure exactly. Like I said, Merlin boss battle has been a while since I've done it in GP, so I can't remember exactly, but I remember the type of units you can use for that. But essentially, um, weak point could be pretty good. The second one, where you can decrease skill ranks, which this Percy might be good because of the point system so like i said it, it could matter on what teams you could run his ultimate is really good because it has extort and stuff like that so you can get your health back uh and stuff like that so the uh, his passive fills ultimate move gauge or by one at the start of the next turn if the hero takes damage which he will be taking damage so this blue bl or not blue red bond could technically be really good but i don't know we'll see until we actually see the actual um you know boss battle in front of us now other units you could try would be like Helbum. Helbum is fantastic because one, he takes away ultimate gauge orbs. He does a lot of damage with this card, this card too, which is really good. And then he increases his base success by five percent per surviving ally, so more more uh, boost for him. Petrifies. I don't think you can petrify her, so you don't have to worry about that. But it does chip damage essentially. And then the ultimate cancels buffs and stances on all enemies and does some decent damage from that. So. Uh, he's good for that reason. You can try him and see how that goes for yourself. So uh, good for those. Arthur's good. You know, Escanar, Gother, Bond is good. Jericho's good to try. Now, like I said, I don't know exactly how it's going to go whenever it comes out. We'll see whenever it fully is out. Uh, hopefully it goes well. I don't think Hauser. I mean, Hauser could. You could try him again. Really, uh, you could try and see. Uh, but I don't know. Like I said, it's something different. You know, the point system is going to be very, very crucial. 
um, and different from what we're used to from the JP compared to what global is now. So we'll see. Uh, Gila, she removes buffs from one enemy. I don't know. I, like I said, I don't remember exactly how Merlin's 100% works. I'd have to see it in, in actual play. But if she does buff herself up, I mean, I guess she can remove buffs, which is really good. She can cancel uh, buffs and stances on her 3-star. could be really good. Then her uh, Ignites can be very crucial. We remove stances. I don't think she does a stance, but anyways, you could try that. Like I said, any unit in the red types can be worked on. Like, I'm telling you... JP and global are like two different things like it's just super crazy now Escanor like I said will be the best unit for sure because and Gother would be the best unit because it's just insane damage so we'll see hopefully you guys are excited um let me know in the comments below if you guys think uh that global is rushing and really really too fast or they, you just think it's just too much but yeah let me know in the comments below if you guys are excited for all this drop a like on this video hope you guys do want to see all of this content I will be creating all of it hopefully Escanor has a banner or something like that we'll be summoning on all of that so yeah that's gonna do it for today's video guys have a great day